Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. Today we're going to be making a colored pencil bowl. Finally jumped on the colored pencil bandwagon and uh, decided to come up with a little bit of a different kind of design and way of doing it. So stick with me and I'll show you how I made it. Alright, so as I said, I wanted to jump on the bandwagon. I wanted to try out colored pencils. So I decided to do a bowl first off and I wanted to try and keep the pencils intact so you saw all the color of the pencil. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that do these and they, they look amazing, but I've seen many people just kind of jam them into a mold and then just kind of pour resin around it. And you get a really cool effect, but that's kind of what I've seen the most of. I wanted to try and keep those colors you know, of the outside of the pencil intact and keep resin around them. So what I decided to do, uh, I've done a few of these bowls where just basically pour it into a, a little plastic bowl. I got these at the dollar store. But my idea was to arrange them in the bowl so that they kind of match the walls, the angle and everything. And then try to keep, uh, you know, resin on both sides, not take it down so far that you cut into the pencils. So I came up with a really pretty easy idea on how to get that to work. A lot of people have asked, how did you get these pencils to, to stay? To be honest, the easiest solution, I, I originally I was going to try and like glue them together and do all this different stuff and, and the easiest solution I came up with was literally just putting some tape around the bowl edge um, where the sticky side was inside the bowl and then you can just, you know, stick the, the pencil in there and then stick it to the tape. You can arrange them in any way and I didn't have any problems with them floating or doing anything. They pretty much stayed in place. Overall, it was a pretty simple casting. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot involved. Now, one thing I have found out is it's better to dry the pencils out. I didn't do that on the first one. And I, you get a few air bubbles. If there's any moisture in there, it'll affect the alumilite, usually causing some air bubbles. It wasn't a ruined casting or anything like that, but definitely best to, to dry them out before you cast them. Now I did run into one little bit of a snag when I was doing the casting. I left the pencils the full length uh, and, I, and I had them all sticking out of the, the bowl. And the problem was I couldn't get my hands around the pencils and the bowl and everything and get it into the pressure pot very easily without moving them and, and my hands hitting the pencils. So what I decided to do was just kind of get it in there because I needed to get it in the pot. And then I used another plastic bowl that was actually made out of melamine to kind of just jam the pencils in there and hold them in place. The problem was when it came to turning that out, it didn't pop right out and it was hard as can be. I mean, that was melamine must be one of the hardest materials ever. My carbide tools didn't even want to cut it. So... Um, that was one little snag I ran into. Uh, if you cut the pencils down, you know, to a manageable size, you won't run into that problem. Now, one thing I did not do on this blank was use a wooden plug for the center. Uh, what that does is it takes up space in the mold so you're not wasting as much resin and it gives you an easy way to mount, uh, you know, the, the blank to the lathe. In this one, I didn't want to have to d figure out the dimensions of where the, you know, the diameter of where the pencils are going to be and, and you got a lot of things going on. Plus, it would have to sit perfectly because I don't want the wood touching the, the pencils in the bowl. <laughs> so I just decided to eliminate it because it was kind of a hassle. So what that meant was the entire bowl was, was resin. Now that presents some problems when you're trying to mount it to the, the face plate or, you know, usually what I do with these plugs is I use the, the worm screw with the, the four jaw chuck. Wood works great with that screw because it's got really coarse threads and it holds well, but those coarse threads are not going to work with resin. So instead, what I decided to try was to drill and tap uh, a hole with 3 8 16 threads. That's the size, or that's the thread pattern for the, the bottle stopper mandrels. Now what that does is it allows you to thread it on there without having to try and force threads into the resin. It just, the resin wouldn't give in that case. It worked fabulous for this size bowl. I'm not sure how big uh, a blank I would use with that method. I'm just, that's one thing, you know, you'd have to kind of case by case basis, try things out and be a little bit careful. But for this one, it worked fabulous. Now overall the turning went really well. Uh, I've had nothing but good luck turning these resin bowls. Um, carbide tools work great on them. 
Uh, I would s probably not suggest using like a bowl gouge or something like that. It seems to be a pretty aggressive cut. Um, scrapers seem to work the best. And I will say, uh, shout out to Heath Knuckles. If you haven't uh, watched his channel, <laughs> all the projects he does, he does amazing work with alumilite blanks and, and wood and stabilized wood and all that stuff. Amazing channel. Go check him out. I'll have a link to his channel down in the show notes. But he uses a negative rake scraper. And I saw that and I thought... I'm gonna give it a try, why not, you know? So I bought one, and I gotta say, he's onto something. Those things, it's just a really comfortable tool to use, you get really good results, so if you don't have one of those in your turning arsenal of tools, definitely try one out. It's a, it, you get good results with the Lumalite with them. So once I had the bowl mounted on the lathe, I just trued up the outside and dug out a mortise so that I could use the four jaw chuck in expansion mode to core out the center. Once I had the back done, I sanded everything up to 400 grit and then flipped the bowl and started coring out the center. Now, like I said earlier, I used a melamine bowl to kind of keep the pencils in place after I had kind of moved them around a little bit. And I had to cut that out and it was horribly abrasive and hard. And even with carbide tools, it took forever to get through that. So that was a bad decision kind of, but uh, once I got through that, everything went really smooth. I pulled out the negative rake scraper and just took my time making passes and digging out that center. Now I left the walls really thick because my intention was to keep the pencils completely intact. So I decided a little bit of a thicker bowl would be fine. I just wanted to make sure that in the end I would get a good idea of how these things turn out with the colored pencils intact. Once I cored the bowl out, then it was just a matter of sanding again up to 400 grit. And after I had finished all the sanding, I went for a lacquer finish. So overall, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. My idea, the concept in my head uh, came to fruition. I'm glad that I was able to figure out a really simple solution of you know, how to hold the pencils in place in the mold. Um, and the casting came out pretty good. There's a couple of areas in here where it looks like maybe the resin didn't fully adhere to the pencils. It may be air bubbles, I'm not sure, but overall I'd say it was a pretty good, pretty good casting. Um, there was one pencil that kind of moved, shifted a little bit and I I ended up cutting into it a little bit on the inside, but I guess one out of 21 on the first try wasn't really too bad. I'm just happy that I was able to keep everything encapsulated and uh, it turned out pretty good. Now, I've done a couple more uh, of these bowl blanks and a few of these are gonna be going out to a couple friends. Carl Jacobson is actually gonna be turning one of these guys at the AEW Symposium in Kansas City in June. So, um, if you wanna see him demo making one of these things, definitely head over to the symposium. And I've even come up with a new idea. Um, one of the problems I have is putting colored pencils in a bowl is cool, but colored pencils kind of, I think of, you know, pencil storage in a colored pencil themed project. So figured out a method of uh, arranging them in a cup type of blank. And so I'll be turning this up, probably do a video on that down the road. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I hope it maybe spurs on some ideas. Uh, I hope if you guys try this out, definitely uh, tag me or, or send me some pics of what you make. Uh, really fun bowls to make. So if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified when new videos come out. These things help a ton, so I appreciate all the support from all you guys. Uh, don't forget, I also do live streaming on Twitch, so Wednesdays and Saturdays, 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we do resin casting experiments on Wednesday, and uh, Saturday we turn up the blanks that we made the week before. So I hope to see you out there, and I guess until next time, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video.